We're presenting a Gelato COVID-19 module um, with Joshua Cass and, from Gelato. And then we'll also have um, Jeremy Morton today from Whatcom EMS talking about his experience um, using Gelato and getting this module set up. Um, and just a reminder, we'll keep you muted throughout. Um, there will be time at the end for questions and answers, and you can send your questions anytime using the Zoom chat box. And we will record this and have it available for those who aren't able to join us today. Um, and then Joshua will be also doing some demos today, and those will be recorded as well for people who can't join us. All right, and I'm just gonna start with the land acknowledgement. We begin by acknowledging with humility that the land where we are today is the territory of the people of the Salish Sea. Their presence is imbued in the waterways, shorelines, valleys, and mountains of the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish people since time immemorial. Alrighty. And I'll go ahead and just pass it to Josh and let him get started with the demo. Great, thank you very much, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. It's good to meet you uh, again <laughs> and see you all. So I know a lot of you aren't on yet, so you might be getting this uh, recording uh, coming back because I know uh, EMS, you're busy. So the goal here is really to go over our COVID-19 module. I'm gonna address two things today. Uh, the first being the 19 module, we really built this piece uh, to be able to track patients that are coming through or might have uh, been subjected to COVID-19, kind of getting around that. And really we're spending some time right now, a little background for, for our history for EMS. Um, we're spending some time right now working with NAEMT, uh, Triple AIM. There's a lot going on with our EMS agencies uh, nationally right now. So just to give you a quick snapshot what that looks and feels like, there are some EMS agencies that are actually going bankrupt because of everything that's hitting with COVID and not getting reimbursements. So we have pretty much the thought leaders in EMS right now trying to get some of the stimulus money that's coming out sent over to our EMS agencies. So that's one thing we're working on. Why is this important? This is going to be important because COVID-19, currently we are in phase one. We are then going to have most likely phase two, which is where everything's going to be coming out again. And uh, Darren, I'm actually thinking about you over in North County right now with the mobile vaccinations. We think that's going to be playing a pretty big piece and a big role for EMS. So this is why NAEMT and the different organizations out there are trying to get EMS some dollars to be able to handle this type of thing. Um, in addition, this is why we're doing what we do. We care about people. We want to serve them and we want to improve outcomes and improve lives. And so within that, we built the COVID-19 module. This is a free module for you. And I'm going to walk you through. It's not a very long demo. We can add this onto your Gelada platform. And I just want to mention this. If there's some EMS agencies out there who are not on Gelada, they can pick up this module for no charge and go ahead and be able to start working with some of the COVID-19 patients that are out there and track them, be able to send information to the CDC or the state. Um, we can connect over to the labs over in Shoreline or wherever the case may be. Um, that they have out there in the state of Washington and do those things. So that is it. I am now going to share my screen so you don't have to look at my ugly mug. Um, Lindsay, I am getting a quick alert notification that disabled participant screen sharing. So can you re-enable that for me? And I apologize for that. Yes. Um, Are you able to get it now? Well, let, let, let me give that a try. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Perfect. So, um, can you see my screen okay, Lindsay? I'll just ask you. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna jump into this module first. So this is our COVID-19 module I wanted to share with you, and I'll just walk through the workflow. Um, Jeremy's gonna speak to this a little bit as what's going on in Whatcom County as well. Um, and then after Jeremy takes a turn, I'd like to jump back in and do another share screen with you. The city of Seattle asked us to track all of their city employees. So anybody who's been subjected to COVID, they want to start tracking that and getting help for their city employees. So law enforcement, social services, Bay Area, you name it, Seattle Housing Authority, we're able to track that. I want to show you what that looks like also. Again, that's going to be a free module from Gelada um, in case that's a good, good piece for your department or if your city or your county would like to do something like that, we can go ahead and stand that up and get that going. So that's really why we're here. We're here to help. 
So let's take a quick look at what we do. As you're doing today, we still have those integration pieces with ESO. We still have those integration pieces with Eddie. So we can pull from your ESO database if you already have us integrated with that to have your, your patient list there. You're still gonna go through and create a referral or your, your uh, crews can actually send referrals over to COVID-19 um, into the service if you would like to. If some firemen identify somebody, that can be referred over. And of course, you can receive referrals from the community. So your different community partners, your behavioral health organizations, social services, if they want to refer, if they think they might have run across someone who has flu-like symptoms, you can say, hey, we have a COVID-19 module, get them into us, we'll do a screening on them, so on and so forth. That's the goal. So let's pretend, let's take a look here. I've got some submitted referrals right over here. It looks like I've got a Bo Duke who we're gonna take a look at. And um, the referring organization, I just chose COVID because I am in a training environment, but of course that will state the organization if you want it to, that it's gonna be referred by. Let's go ahead and view this really quick. Here's my information. So here's what's going on. I'm the individual who referred it over. Um, and then we have the patients, you know, phone number, different information about the patient, so on and so forth. Down here again, I'm going to have, if you, again, a lot of you are integrated with ESO, I'm going to have all your ESO databases from your EPCR listed here. But let's pretend this is a new individual we've never met with before. We don't have their patient record anywhere. I click create patient from referral, just like we normally do here in Jedlata. And of course, I can close the feedback loop. If I'm reading some things and say, hey, this is for the COVID module, you sent me an MIH patient, this is not the, the right program, I can reject this referral and close that feedback loop. Or of course, I can process the referral, which is what I'm going to do. We're gonna provide a new service for the COVID-19 response. I'm gonna go ahead and migrate that data now and go to provided services. So here we go, I've got Bo Duke here. I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to myself and also the uh, COVID Gelada team. So I've got that assigned. So again, you can have multiple, multiple people working around the same COVID patient. And this goes as well for the North Sound ACH. If you wanted to have an umbrella piece of this, you could have the different EMS teams select what other EMS teams are working together. That's a piece we could bring to the table also. I'm gonna come right down here. Here's the initiating referral information that I have here. And this should look very similar to you. Kristen probably walked through with a lot of you on our services that we have here at Gelada. So this will look very similar. We've got our encounters down here, which I'll open up momentarily, but I really wanna take you over to our COVID face sheet. So let's jump into the face sheet. This is where we're gonna be entering all of the information. So I'm gonna come down here, state what type of risk I believe this individual is. We believe right now that uh, Bo's gonna be a low risk. Again, more information about him, contact information for emergency contacts, travel exposure. Let's go through an assessment. So we pulled this from the CDC site for what's going on for assessing individuals, and that's kind of the goal here. Um, patient health care work in the United States, yes, they are. Travel to Wuhan, yes, they did. Recently, they have a fever. And then you can just go through, and this should look, again, very similar to you. It's just like our other modules. But again, we're going through the COVID piece. If this is someone you have seen before, and this is a patient you already have under MIH, the pre-existing medical conditions will automatically move on over and you'll have them displayed here. Again, we try to get away from the duplicate entry piece because that's what we don't like here at Gelada. So um, coming down here, this is where you can actually run some of these state tests and uh, do these pieces. You wanna send it over to the CDC, you can, you know, allocate that yes we did up oh, we got a positive on the swab that has been sent over to the cdc and then we got a negative on this test here so we're going to be able to document the different tests that we're doing what stage they're at what is going on with those tests and then i scroll back to the top and i click back to service up here and boom you can see that this face sheet has been completed so we've done this this service that we have right here I also have a checklist that I wanna go through. Are we gonna do a follow-up within 24 hours? I sure would like to. And let's pretend we had that encounter with an individual. I'm gonna go ahead and denote that here. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna say, let's go for, it's gonna be the initial contact. And this might happen actually after you met with the, the uh, patient for the first time. You just did that assessment. You're gonna come back and document your encounter that you spent some time working with this individual. What was the outcome? This was successful. Uh, we're gonna have some very good narrative notes here. I can't spell. 
And uh, of course, we can go through the mess, and this is going to be an in-person type thing. This is a neat feature we've had here uh, in Gelada. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, this is actually at a crossroads. I'm going to allow this to go ahead and access my computer. It's telling me, hey, Joshua, here's where you are. That's actually where I'm at here in Colorado Springs. So um, our GPS system will locate exactly where you are and uh, note that for the patient so you can have that for the location of encounter. Um, that is now documented. So over here, we might want to do a $40 follow-up. That's going to be in progress. We haven't done that yet. Let's pretend this was completed, seven-day process. This will just let you know what is going on with your patients. And then, of course, as they recover, as new things happen, you know, we can update the information, update their status, so on and so forth. And that's really the goal of the service. Right up here on the top right, um, once, they, uh, once they have recovered from, from COVID-19, we can complete the service for this individual, and then that will be logged. I'm going to go back to my summary up here on the top right. Give me a minute to jump over there. And here we go. Here's the service encounter that we have in the last 30, 60, six months. So we can start tracking these, uh, these COVID individuals and what we're doing with them. And of course, Gelada is going to display this. I'm on the top left now on my navigation panel under my dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and display that information right here. So this will show us what is going on with these individuals, you know, what risk they are, positive, pending, negative on the results. And that'll just give you a quick breakdown and we can run reports on that, do whatever information you would like to do to send that information where it needs to go. And that really comprises my demo for this piece. We were going to have Jeremy run through today and just kind of share, uh, you know, the use of the module, things of that nature. Good to see you, by the way. Uh, the use of the module, some of those pieces, and I wondered if you could just speak to that as far as how Wacom is using the COVID-19 module, how that's been working for you all, and, uh, and just talk to some of those pieces. So, well, yeah, interestingly, uh, we are going to put that module into play probably this afternoon or first thing tomorrow. Uh, Whatcom County has uh, put together what we're calling the Isolation and Recovery Center. Uh, it's in one of our uh, local motels that we've converted. And so that has a 60 bed capacity in there. And we intend to use that for people that need to isolate, uh, potentially homeless, vulnerable adult population, or those that can't go back home. And so our community paramedic team and what is also known as our GRACE team, our ground uh, uh, response and coordinated engagement team, which is a team of social workers that, that work with paramedics, are going to actually uh, somewhat run the facility. Uh, in fact, our Grace uh, manager, we were kind of joking with her, she's now become a motel manager for the facility. And so uh, what the COVID module brings into this is a way to register people in, into this facility. And so as uh, those patients check in, we'll use the COVID module for some case management, of course, some basic uh, physical exam information and that way uh, while they're in the facility because it ideally it could be a 14-day quarantine depending on the situation uh, we'd be able to monitor them there and then once widespread testing becomes available we can also use that module to track uh, testing in those patients and especially if there's a, a, a need to go to the hospital and uh, uh, not quite clear if it's been set up uh, today yet However, we are going to expand at least a, a user uh, uh, ability from the hospital social workers to be able to get into Gelada as well, uh, because if a patient's been over at the recovery center and gets more sick, if you will, then there may be a transfer to the emergency room in the hospital, and we'll have that charting that was done on the scene with that. So, uh, so you know, um, I kind of put it together on the fly. Thank you, guys. Uh, it came at a timely point for us because we were trying to figure out how we would do charting on, uh, you know, these patients at the recovery center. Perfect. No, thank you very much for that, Mike. And, and it sounds like uh, we do have Jeremy on as well. Jeremy, are you with us? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, Jeremy, Mike, Mike just gave us a really fin fantastic synopsis, just kind of, uh, kind of the need and uh, what you all are setting up at the hotel and things of that nature. Were there any other additional pieces you wanted to add as far as kind of what, what the hopes are running the module, what, what the goals are, so on and so forth, that you would like to share with some of the other EMS teams on? Well, the COVID situation is interesting is that there's a centralized command made up of varying agencies and all from all over the county. And so when the question comes down to, and this is kind of the brass tacks, especially in a governmental setting of, uh, well, who's gonna be signed into the equipment? Where's the equipment coming from? Who has access to that particular platform? A lot of things get simplified going through Gelada because as an admin and an analyst myself, I can manage a lot of the 
registration and management of the data system itself. I can handle the reporting. And a lot of this can be done in kind of a nuclear fashion. When we start pulling in four or five agencies, you know, ordering a laptop when there are no laptops to order sort of thing, it is an example of how that can get kind of backlogged. So in this particular situation, the COVID module gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility at a time when we need as much flexibility as possible. Great, thank you for that, Jeremy. And I just appreciate you uh, speaking to those, those pieces right now. So thank you. Um, as we mentioned, again, one more time, this is going to be a free module. If you see that there, there might be some interest in this, please uh, reach out to me. Um, you all should have my contact information. I'll go ahead and blast it out to everybody who is on this uh, invite so you have it again. Um, but let's have a discussion about kind of what you're looking for. Kristen can come along. We can get this implemented. We, we're doing a quick deploy for our COVID uh, deployments right now. So we can get this stood up pretty quick. And this is kind of outside of what we normally do. We have a specialized team just focused on this area uh, to get this going. So please let us know. And um, uh, Lindsay, I'm gonna pass this back to you. I, I still would like to go through at some point uh, the Seattle piece for the, uh, the employee tracking, but let me know when you would like that to happen. Yeah, Joshua, if you wanna go ahead and uh, do that now, that'd be great. I think you have the controls to share your screen again if that's where you're headed. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so what we're doing here. So again, uh, let me just uh, get organized. I got a bunch of screens open on my world. <laughs> so this is going to be our employee symptom tracking referral. This is going to be City of Seattle came to us and said, we've got, we've got a bunch of uh, first responders that are out there who are uh, getting subjected to this uh, to, to COVID-19. We want to be able to track them internally. We want to take care of them as a city. This really thought made me think this applies not only to our departments and our agencies, but also public health. This applies to counties. I mean, there, there's a lot of different applications where this can work. And it really depends on how your community is involved. And I know we have a lot of islands on, which are holistic in how they, how they work together. So um, with that, this could be a good piece for that, uh, just to make sure that everybody you know, is, is staying within health. So what's the goal here? So uh, obviously the city of Seattle has about 1,100 firefighters uh, across the city. So we don't wanna have a bunch of logins for Gelada. They receive a link and that link is gonna be this URL right on the top here. So they click on that link. I'm gonna take them to this page and they're gonna be able to go ahead and without logging in, fill out this information. We can have people refer the city employees in if we want to. Typically that's not gonna happen. A lot of this is gonna be blank. So we have Papa Smurf. He's probably gonna fill this out by himself, put his information in, we're going to ask him what was your assignment here he was able to choose that assignment during his time of exposure a uh, quarantine or isolation so he's given me a whole bunch of information what, what's going on with him and what's happening so on and so forth Do you want some peer support Do you need alternate housing and uh, and then any notes that he would like to have here he's going to come down here and just click the button submit referral and we're going to say thank you done that's it that's all he's doing so he's now going to go about his day and doing what he does. I'm going to stop share that screen and I'm going to jump to another screen that I'm going to show you what it looks like when that referral is received. So now, hold on, I've been idle. Let me unlike my account here. Great. So now I'm going to jump over because I just got a text message telling me, hey, Papa Smurf just submitted for, the, uh, for, for an employee for Seattle Fire. So I'm gonna come over here and say, ah, okay, so here's what's going on. Papa Smith, I'm gonna go ahead and view his record. So I'm gonna be able to look down here and say, okay, here's all the information. This is good for me. I'm administering the program here in the, the city of Seattle. And I'm gonna come down here again. Typically, you know, Gelada, we wanna integrate with a whole bunch of stuff. So we're gonna integrate fully with the uh, Seattle database for all their city employees. So I'll have those people here. If for some reason there was somebody new, I would go ahead and click create patient from referral as typical here in Gelada. I could then process this referral, which I'm going to do right here. And I'm gonna provide a new service, COVID-19 response, migrate the data, go to provider service, and here we are. So this is one of our, our employees that we have here for the city of Seattle. I'm gonna say that I'm managing this along with the uh, Seattle FD. And, uh, and then you can see the information. 
looks ironically very similar to the uh, COVID-19 module. That's because it is. That's because uh, the, the information that we want to collect and the information that the, uh, the city was looking for was also similar. So I'm going to jump in here and uh, you can see we're still asking the same type of questions, travel and exposure questions, same symptom questions that we want to ask. We want to get all this in for the assessment that needs to be run whenever we're, we're tracking with individuals as well as, and I'm sorry I scrolled really quick there, but I know you saw this in the earlier demo, this is going to be our testing. You know, what testing is being done for Papa Smurf right now? What's the status of this? Did we send this over to the CDC? Yes, we did. And we can go back and say, okay, that is done for the assessment. Then we go back to the service, and this is where the city of uh, Seattle is going to have a little bit different protocol. I've kind of got a, a training template. You can see up here on the top left, I'm in my training environment right now. Um, so they're, they're, uh, they're building out their protocols for what those pieces are going to look like. But um, that's really what we're trying to do here is taking care of their, their employees, and we're going to walk with them and uh, you know, connect them to community resources to get them the help they need to have. If they need alternate housing, they'll work with Seattle Housing Authority. So again, all the, all the resources are coming together to work and address this specifically for the city. So um, if this is of interest to you, again, this is a no cost coming out of Gelada. And uh, just let us know, let me or Kristen know, and we can go ahead and get you set up and uh, get you going here. So uh, back on this dashboard piece, we're going to see the new new COVID-19 cases that's within 30 days, who's open, how many are closed, and then, of course, here's my snapshot for everything that's going on with these individuals, where we're at, how we're working with them, so on and so forth. So um, are there any questions for me on either of these modules today? And I'm not seeing anything in the chat box right now. So I'm assuming there are no questions, which means I did a really good job of my demo, not, not typical. <laughs> so please, um, if after even this conversation here, you can send an email to either Lindsay or myself with any questions that you have, and let's have a conversation about it. That would be fantastic. Yeah, Joshua, I had a quick question. Um, so you had said sure. the module is live with the city of Seattle for their employees. Um, if there's somebody, can you talk a little bit more about if somebody isn't currently live with Gelada or contracted with Gelada and they wanted to use this, um, this module, can you talk how they might do that? Absolutely. Thank you for, for asking that question. So, Lindsay, I'm guessing most people who aren't working with us know you. So, if they were to reach out to you and say, hey, we would like to go ahead and get this uh, module implemented, if you would send them over to me, um, then we would just have a conversation. You would just come to me and say, hey, we heard about your COVID-19 module or your employee tracking module. We'd like to get that stood up. We also understand that it's free. Yes, it is. We can go ahead and have those conversations and uh, get everything set up and, and, uh, and working with you. So um, we'd love to do that. I do see a, uh, a quick question from Liz Baxter. Uh, what are the range of possible referrals? Um, Liz, the, the range of possible referrals, so specifically for this module, it's really, whenever you say range of possible referrals, I'm thinking within the realm of COVID-19. Are you talking outside of the realm of COVID-19? Is that your question? No, just as you were looking, as you had that demo screen up, there was a there was a, a box that said like referrals. I just didn't know what happened if you hit that button. Let me let me jump back over there. Okay, a box that said referrals. Let me look, look for on, that. On the on the left hand side of your dashboard, it says create referral. Yes. So th this is where, for this specific module, the COVID-19 module, this is where you can create a referral. So let's pretend that I I'm, I'm working in EMS and I'm out working with an individual and I say, oh my goodness, you have, you have flu-like symptoms. I should probably enroll you into the COVID-19 module. I can go ahead and create that referral for the COVID-19 module. A lot of our EMS teams right now, Liz, are, are running uh, MIH platforms. They have a bunch of different programs, like uh, Whatcom County has the GRACE program that's out there. So they might be addressing some of their grace patients and then realize, oh, this person might need to also be in the COVID-19 module. And from here, they can choose to create a referral to refer them into the COVID-19 module. So that's how you can run multiple programs and be able to refer patients into multiple programs based on the patient's need. Does that answer your question? Um, kind of, yes. 
but that's okay. Okay, but but I didn't I didn't hit it. Hit, hit, ask me again then, because I'm not hitting it right. So and and again, I'm I'm thinking more as like a new person that we might go. Hey, here's this free module. That if they came here, it is. So if we use the Grace pro program as an example, is there if I hit create a referral, will this allow me to make a referral to the Grace program? Um, only if Wacom, so, so I appreciate this question. Wacom is going to be what we call a hub here at Gelada. So they're running a program called Grace. They can have other agencies refer into their program if they allow those other agencies to be what we call a spoke on their system. So Jeremy would have to authorize that. Mike Hilly and Jeremy would have to authorize that to say, hey, we're, we're okay to allow these other organizations to refer into our program. At that point, yes. Then you could refer into the Grace program and do those types of things. Did that answer your question? I think you answered it enough. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Liz. Anybody else? I have a quick question. Um, so in the North Sound region, what is it just Whatcom using this new module? Are there others uh, getting ready to implement this module? Uh, not to my understanding. Kristen, did anybody, is anybody else in the North Sound region um, looking to do this? We have um, this going through, well, we've got a few in Pierce County in the north um, right now. No, because the MIH, which is currently hooked up, aren't really getting their hands into the COVID yet. Um, they have different teams and um, they're not working through it, but we do have a few that are looking into potentially adding it on um, within the next couple of weeks because of the, um, uh, the stimulus. Uh, they really need a tracking for that. And although they're finding ways to track their patients at the moment, they're not finding the ways to track it well enough to report um, for those uh, grants and those monies coming through. Okay, thank you for that, Kristen. Sure. Are there any other questions uh, from anyone else on the line today? I want to say thank you all very much for everything you're doing. I know this is uh, an interesting time that we're in, a very unique time right now as a country, as a state, as, uh, as everybody. Um, and uh, we just really appreciate you all being the front lines. And that's why we wanted to offer this for free, just to help support and stand up what you all are doing. So um, if there's anything we can do on our end to make life easier for you, please let us know. Uh, reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help. Great. Thank you. And again, we'll be sending this recording out to everyone who was not able to join. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or Joshua. Uh, joshua.cast at gelata.com. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you.